What's good, everybody? Joe Nice, live and direct as usual, November the 19th, 2020, November 19th, 2020, November 192020. We're going to do this over here again on the Facebook quote-unquote fan page. The whole concept of a quote-unquote fan page seems real foreign to me and kind of fucked up all the way around, but it is what it is. This is what social media has caused us to do. This is where the way social media has said, hey, you know what? We want fans instead of actual friendships. We want, we want fans instead of actual relationships. We want us to be quote-unquote socially distant. And again, Instagram is fucking with me. Once again, they're preventing me from me, preventing me from going live and direct because... I seem to have a narrative and a point of view and a line of thinking that goes against what the fifth estate wants to have on their tool, on their platform. So we're going to do it over here for as long as we can over here before Facebook says, ah, you know what, Joe, you're talking too much. We can't, we got to shut you. We got to shut you down. We're going to close the door on you, brother. Hold on two seconds. All right, back again. I didn't go too far. I didn't go too far. Now, the holiday season is coming up. I know many of us don't have money to shop for a lot of things, but if you do have money to shop for something, you should be shopping for books because books are where true knowledge is found. Books are where you're going to learn a lot about a lot that schools may not necessarily want to teach you or are incapable of teaching you for a variety of reasons. And and I've mentioned this in several videos that I've done on, on, on Instagram, but I might as well present some of these ideas and concepts here and talk about some of these books here because it's important to make sure I share the wealth across many social media platforms. Many of you all are wondering, well, hey, Joe, why is the racial wealth gap the way it is? Why is racism the way it is? What about slavery? What about racist housing policies? How come things are the way they are between black people and white people in these United States of America? What I'm going to do is spend the next few minutes showing you a few books that I think each of you all should be reading. And if you're a teacher and you have, you know, whether you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, even if you're at a community college and you want to talk, if you want to have talk, I have a sociology course based upon anti-racism or based upon African-American studies and why things are the way they are and come up with reasonable, durable solutions to remedy some of the situations between black people and white people in the United States, I urge you to pick up some of these books in your local bookstores. Don't buy them off Amazon for all the reasons we know about not buying off of Amazon. First book I want to discuss with everybody here today. And again, when people ask me, hey, Joe, what resources are out there? What's out there? How can, I, how can I learn more about what's going on in America? The first book that I present to you, and this again, is if you want to learn more about really why things are the way they are in the United States, we're going to start with this book right here. When Affirmative Action Was White by Professor Ira Katz Nelson. This book is what it says it is. When Affirmative Action Was White. Many of the programs that were passed in the New Deal between the 1930s and 1940s, they were created with discrimination in mind, with discrimination in mind. And when you talk about many of these policies that were created to not only help everybody, but specifically help black people, the people who remedied the most were actually white people. So if you want to learn more about all of this stuff, start with this book first. Start here. Well, wait a minute, Joe. What about slavery? Who benefited? Did black people get anything out of it? Did white people get anything out of it? Read this book by none other than Dr. Claude Anderson. The name of the book is called Black Labor, White Wealth. And just what you think it looks like is what it says it is. Talks about how black people produced loads of the labor in this country and black people didn't get any of the wealth from it. Didn't get any of the wealth from it. Well, wait a minute, Joe. What about black people and money? What about black banks? How do we deal with the racial wealth gap with black banking? This book here, The Color of Money by none other than Professor Mercer Baradaran. And again, this book talks about the black, black banks and the racial wealth gap and how 
Jim Crow laws and Reconstruction and how a lot of reparations created the conditions and the situations for wealth inequality in the United States of America. Well, Joe, how do we how do black people gain wealth? How do black people get wealth? One of the great ways that black people in the United States gain wealth, and quite honestly, anybody in the United States gains wealth, is through home ownership. But there is obviously a racial disparity between black people and white people when we're talking about home ownership. Read this book, The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. It talks about how the GI Bill was essentially racist. It talks about how housing policies in the United States were, how white people were were promoted to buying homes and black people were discouraged from buying homes. There is a racist housing policy many of you all have heard of. It's called redlining, where real estate agents drew red lines around particular areas where there was a high concentration of black people and those property values in those particular redlined areas were, were devalued. And as, and as a result of the devaluation, less government resources were pumped into those particular areas. The concept of having what's called a racial, racial covenant, where you have black people living in one particular area and white people living in another particular area, and black people and white people not allowed to live together by law, was created in my hometown of Baltimore in 1910. And... There's, there's a PDF that it describes the legislation, and I've actually read it. I, it. It's shocking when you read what is in that book. It's shocking when you read what's in that book. Um, in fact, I want to find the, the racial zoning. There's an entire chapter in this book about racial zoning. Yeah, I, I'll let you all read the book. I'll let you all read it. Well, Joe, how do we do? How do we fix the problem with the w- racial wealth gap in the United States? What do we do? Where can I learn more about it? Read this book here, "From Here to Equality" by Professor Sandy Darity. He has a PhD in economics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He runs the Samuel Dubois Center here, not too far away from where I am at Duke University. This is a brilliant book, and it discusses the case for reparations for American descendants of enslaved people in these United States. And in the book, he discusses a framework for presenting these, for pursuing reparations. And the framework is called ARC, A-R-C, and it's an acronym. A stands for acknowledgement. R, the R stands for restitution, and the C stands for closure. I'm sorry, not restitution. The acknowledgement it stands for redress, for redress, redress. So acknowledgement, redress, and closure to pursuing rest, re- reparations. And the last book, and I think everybody should really read this book. Some people don't like it. I like it. There are some parts that I was like, okay, hmm, this is interesting. But overall, a generally well-written book. This book, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. Read this book. It's worth the, It's worth the money. So again, read those books, learn more about what's going on in the United States, because again, there's a whole lot of it's happening right now that the United States mainstream media will not share with you and will not tell you. And I have no problem voicing my opinion and quite honestly, my displeasure about everything that is happening in the United States right now and the people who are elected representatives of the people who are not doing anything for any of us right now in these United States. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. There are mile-long food lines in Texas right now to get boxes of food. Food banks are running out of food. Unemployment benefits have run out for millions of Americans. And we have a Congress in the United States that is not doing anything to make sure that there's any sort of economic stimulus. Nothing at all. And... There's going to be people put out their, out of their homes soon. There's going to be people on the street soon. There's going to be people hungry soon. There's going to be people more people catching COVID soon. More people dying from COVID soon. And we right now we have a government in the United States that's not doing anything to make sure that we can stay in our houses safely, pay us to stay in our homes, 
and make sure that we have health care to deal with all of these health issues. No one's doing anything. No one's doing anything. What do we have? And, and what's happening in other countries right now, like in France and in Poland and in Uganda and in Chile and in Bolivia and in Thailand with the Thailand, the protest is called the rubber duck revolution. That is what we need in this country right now. And I said it yesterday when I went live and I'll say it again. We need an, we need a workers strike. We need to shut this entire country down top to bottom. Shut this country down until the government does what we need them to do for the working class and the working people of this, of these United States. Shut this entire country down. Shut it down. Because the government's not doing what we, they need to do for us. We need to do it for ourselves. And the best way to do it for ourselves is to shut this country down and make them pay attention to us because we elected them. They, we are their bosses. They should be listening to us. If they're not going to listen to us, then we should take necessary steps, nonviolent direct action to make sure that they do pay attention to us. That's what we need to do. Anyways, I think I've said all I want to say for right now, for today. That's it. Hope everybody stays safe. Please stay healthy. Have a wonderful weekend. And hopefully Instagram will eventually get their heads out of their asses and let me go back live on Instagram. If not, I'll just continue to do things here, post videos over there of these conversations, keep the conversation moving. Because now more than ever, I'm not playing music anymore, at least not right now. No one's really doing anything. And I think it's incumbent. Again, I can't tell anybody what to do. It's not my, that's, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. But I think the more people speak up and the more people speak out and the more people place demands on our government, and I shouldn't even say our government, but our governments, because Canada's dealing with the same sort of craziness right now. So is England. So is France. So is Germany. So is Belgium. So is Australia. So is Hong Kong and everything that's going taking place in Hong Kong right now with the protests. The more that each of us as musicians, artists, dancers, painters, graphic designers, event planners, promoters, whoever, whatever, the more of us use our voices to speak out, hopefully the sooner all of this craziness and madness will end and we can get back to doing what we love doing the most. I'm just one voice. I have a few followers here and there on all my social media platforms. And, and I'm tired of the bullshit that's happening across the board all the way around. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. And we need change. And we all need to do something. We all need to do our part to try to make some, some type of change across the board, all the way around. And the sooner we get that change, the sooner will we all be able to do what we love doing again. The sooner we'll be able to resume our lives and hopefully have better quality of life. life after this pandemic. That's it for me, everybody. Take care. You can find this video wherever. You know where to find it. Joe Nice DJ on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All right? Peace.